A war of words among two reported targets of the Mueller probe. Earlier today, the Daily Caller reported of an early copy of a book written by author Jerome Corsi. Now, in this book, Corsi claims that he testified to Mueller's grand jury that just one month before the 2016 election, Trump confidant Roger Stone asked him to contact Julian Assange about releasing Podesta's, uh, John Podesta's emails. Now, Corsi claims this was because Stone had advanced knowledge of the release of those infamous Access Hollywood tape, that knowledge, that he knew about that, and advanced knowledge of the emails themselves. Corsi was asked about this earlier tonight on our own Tucker Carlson. This is a political winch hunt. Uh, because I did not have a contact with Assange, but yet had figured out that Assange had uh, Podesta's emails, and I figured it out and told Roger Stone and told many people in August, and it just happened that I was right. I did figure it out, and I connect the dots, and this time I happened to be right. You just won't believe that I figured it out. Roger Stone is disputing some of Corsi's other claims, and he has a lot to say. He joins us now in an exclusive interview to tell us what is going on here. Roger, it's good to see you tonight. I know you watched what uh, Mr. Corsi said on Tucker Carlson's show. A lot of folks watching, you know, they think of the Mueller probe and, like, nefarious Russian plots, and they hear, you know, Assange's name and the Ecuadorian embassy. They don't know who Jerome Corsi is, and they kind of know who you are, but simplify this for us so our listeners know what they need to know to understand the current state of affairs in this investigation as it, as it pertains to you. Well, first of all, Laura, thank you for having me because my own show at InfoWars is so heavily censored to deny me a forum to have a chance to defend myself. I'm very grateful for the chance to be here. Uh, this is really simple. Um, it shows what happens when you hotbox a 72-year-old man for 40 hours, as the Mueller interrogators did. Uh, quite clearly, uh, I made it very clear that on August 21st, I posted a tweet that said, the Podesta's time in the barrel will come. I meant that public scrutiny of the Podesta's Russian business interests, as I had been briefed about by Jerry Corsi, would be in the media. Now Jerry Corsi has been browbeat into claiming that that was some kind of a cover story. Uh, and because I was taking heat for that tweet. But that's not even logical, Laura, because my tweet wasn't controversial until six weeks later when we Julian Assange published John Podesta's email. So I had no advance notice that his emails would be stolen or that they would be published. And then the secondary claim that I knew about the Billy Bush NBC tape in advance and that I asked Jerry Corsi to contact Julian Assange to ask Assange to move up or move back his uh, his data dump to distract attention from that, that's a fairy tale. That's just whole cloth. I learned about it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Like every other American, I was actually on the street in Manhattan. And, so, Roger, look, there was no... It's sad that he's been pressured this way Roger, to, there's, to bear there, false witness against There's me. no text um, evidence or email evidence regarding uh, the Billy Bush claim. And nothing... Nothing definitive about the other claim about advanced knowledge. There's just one, there's just one uh, email from you to Corsi from July uh, 25th of 2016. We'll just put it up on the screen. Um, then this is from uh, the draft court papers. Get to, I guess, Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy in London and get the pending WikiLeaks emails. That's what you've referenced uh, several times. And just once again, why doesn't yeah, that look bad? Well, there's an important backstory because hours before that, I was forwarded an email by James Rosen of Fox uh, that had been sent to me by Charles Ortel, one of the very best researchers and investigators in the country. Uh, and Rosen had gotten a tip that the, uh, the disclosures were going to be about the Clinton Foundation. Like every politico, like every political reporter in America, I was curious about what Assange had. The bottom line of this, Laura, is very clear. Nothing we've learned in the last 72 hours shows that there was any collusion between the Russian state and Donald Trump's campaign. Uh, two million dollars, pardon me, 20 million dollars and two years in, there's still no evidence of any such Russian collusion. Well, not this according to yeah, a witch hunt. Roger, not according to David Sicoline, uh, who, and this is uh, from today on CNN, who made a contrary claim. Let's watch. 
Well, I think, again, this is more evidence of an ongoing uh, conspiracy or collusion between high-ranking uh, Trump campaign officials and WikiLeaks and uh, Julian Assange and the stolen uh, emails. You can see that he's not only directing Jerome Corsi to get information about, or get the copies of the emails or get information about them, he reports back to uh, Roger Stone on August 2nd. Your response to him, some of it you've covered, but when did specifically. When did political gossip become criminalized? Uh, everybody in America wanted to know after Assange teased these emails on CNN in June and then on Fox in August what exactly it was that he had. But there is no flow of information. I received no emails and passed no emails on to Donald Trump or the Trump campaign. That's just a fairy tale. Uh, but it, let's face it, the entire Russian collusion delusion is meant to distract us from the fact that the Obama administration, the Obama NSA, the Obama FBI were using illegal, unconstitutional FISA warrants to spy on Donald Trump's campaign and were using the FBI to infiltrate Donald Trump's campaign. Uh, that plus Uranium One, uh, there's a great need to distract from all of those things. So we point to Donald Trump and the phony Russian collusion, which just doesn't exist. Have you been offered a deal by the special counsel? Most certainly not. And there's no circumstance under whatsoever that I would bear false witness against the president. Uh, I am being persecuted because I supported Donald Trump for president and because I helped defeat Hillary Clinton and for no other reason. Roger Stone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it.